Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about yellow fungus disease in COVID-19 patients. This yellow fungus disease is now all over the news headlines. So let's understand what this yellow fungus disease means and how dangerous it is. You must be aware of black fungus disease or mucormycosis which can be seen in COVID recovered patients. In past few months there has been several cases in the states of Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh for mucormycosis. If you want to learn more about mucormycosis, you can get a video by clicking on the i button. Now recently, there has been cases of white fungus and also yellow fungus. Now this might be funny, right? What are these all white, yellow and black funguses? Does these color mean anything or it's just a misnomer? So in this video, we'll learn all the signs behind that and stay tuned till the end of this video. So right now, if you are watching social media or reading newspapers, these questions might be in your head that what are these diseases, how much I should worry and what can I do to keep myself safe? And the biggest question right now is where does these fungal infection come from? because they were not known before, how our immune system can fight against this fungus if we have a healthy immune system in the first place. And what is the relationship between COVID infection and all these fungal infections? Is there any um, relation at all? Now, there are many countries who are worstly affected by COVID-19, but India is one of the country which is reporting high number of COVID associated fungal or secondary infection cases. We have to understand why India is the hotspot and not any other Western countries. So all of these things would be discussed in this video. Now let me tell you that several species of mucor and rhizopus are known as uh, muco I mean known to cause mucormycosis, so-called black fungal disease. Then several species of aspergillus and candida leads to aspergillosis or candidiasis and these kind of infections are actually known as white fungus infection. Lastly, there is a rare species of fungus generally found in reptiles whose name is pretty difficult and it's pronounced as nanesiophysis and parananesiophysis. So these fungal species cause yellow fungal disease. Only one yellow fungal disease case has been reported so far in India. So you might not worry so much about it, but let's learn more about this thing. So this yellow fungus does not look yellow at all under the microscope. This is how a yellow fungus should look like. And I have provided the source in this video. Now this yellow fungus disease causes yellow blemishes on the skin of iguana and many other lizards. And from that aspect, it might be named as yellow fungus. Let's talk about the symptoms, which includes reduced appetite, lethargy and headache. Now, these symptoms are pretty common in many diseases. So if you have these symptoms, that doesn't mean that you, you would have yellow fungal disease. So consulting your ENT or your general physician would be a good idea in that case. Now let's talk about some white funguses. Again, these white funguses is also a misnomer. Generally, these white funguses are nothing but Aspergillus and Candida. So Aspergillus fumigatus or Aspergillus nigger are the key species which are responsible for Aspergillosis or white fungus infection. Now there are several types of Aspergillosis such as allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis or chronic pulmonary aspergillosis all of these affects the lungs when there could be invasive or systemic aspergillosis in that case our brain can be affected as well so it's pretty deadly the question is where does these fungus come from or the all the mucormycosis species come from moist soil decaying organic matter animal dung from these places and these are also the source for white funguses such as uh, all these aspergillus or candida. So we right now know that what are the sources and where we can generally find these funguses. Now there is an important point. These fungal diseases 
are not really harmful to general people. And that is why we didn't knew about these funguses for so long, right? But problem comes when you are immunocompromised. Then these funguses are really deadly for you. Now, apart from COVID patients, these kind of fungal inf infections are previously reported in patients who has undergone organ transplantation or stem cell transplantation, a person who is taking drugs, a person who is diabetic and undergoing diabetic ketoacidosis, or a person who is taking chemotherapy and having a cancer. So all of these category of people are more susceptible towards these kind of secondary fungal infections. COVID patients who have recovered are most likely immunocompromised because steroids are given to them to prevent the interleukin storm. Now that has taken serious toll on their immune system. Even if they have recovered from the virus, but their immune system is extremely weak. But the good part about these mycosis infections are they are not contagious like COVID-19. So if even if you are in near vicinity of a person who is infected with mucormycosis or any other fungal type, you are not likely to get it. As per medication, antifungal drugs could be used for treatment. Early detection can also lead to surgical removal of that infested tissue. Now, if the detection is late, then, then this particular infection could be proven deadly as well. Now let's talk about why India is the hotspot for COVID-19 associated fungal infection. Not Why not any other country like USA or like let's say Canada? The biggest reason is climate, hygiene and many other aspects. So let's discuss them one by one. Now the hospitals are overwhelmed during second wave of COVID in India. And there was a huge scarcity of oxygen. Now COVID patients need oxygen support for their survival. Now in that case, many of the cases, the doctor had no other option to give the patients industry grade oxygen cylinder. Medical grade oxygen cylinder are pure and, and the oxygen is tested to be safe for patients. But these kind of testing and quality control is not done for industry grade. So there could be problems associated with these cylinders. Now, Instead of losing the patient, that might be a good decision to use these things, but that might have increased the chances of secondary fungal infections because these unsterilized cylinders might have fungal spores inside them. Second point is the oxygen delivery system. So from the oxygen cylinder, the oxygen bubbles through a chamber known as humidifier and then through a tubing, it reaches the patient. This humidifier is key part of this delivery system because you need to give moist oxygen. Now water is one of the region where fungus can grow. So if sterilized water is not used then there is a huge chance that fungus might grow in this water. In case of this tubing, the, if the tubing material is not clean properly or the tubing is not, uh, not recycled or changed then that can also increase the risk of uh, fungal infections. Now, apart from that, there are many other reasons. Let's say a COVID recovered individual has to go to his office in this scorching heat. Now, in this summertime, when the temperature is almost as high as 35 degrees centigrade to 40 degrees centigrade, there would be a huge humidity and perspiration. Now this humid situation and this temperature is the optimal situation for fungal growth. That is why if you inspect the mask, we might see fungal growth in these masks. Now we might ask that what we can do for our own safety. So one kind of advice is to change the mask very frequently. So if you change the mask frequently, the risk that you would inhale the fungal spores would really decrease. Now, apart from these things, there are a few other important points. Washing the mask, drying the mask, and keeping the mask safely in a sterilized packet. All of these things are really important hygiene that we should follow. Now, the problem in India is like, 
you keep the mask here and there let's say you put the mask on a humid place or let's say a moldy place so all the spores of the fungus get in or are now stuck in the mask and next time when you inhale all of those those spores goes inside your respiratory system which might lead to several complications now we have to understand these kind of effects i mean these kind of risks are always there and people need to be educated about them now let's think about a farmer because many cases people don't have choice this farmer was infected with covid-19 and now he is recovered and he has to go back to the field for his own job now while he is doing or while he is performing any farming related activity he might encounter animal dung or moist soil etc right which are breeding ground for funguses and that is why just after covid he is more susceptible towards fungal infection now we learn that how fungal infections can spread now the biggest question is can our immune system fight against these fun funguses yes the answer is right so we have two branches of immune system innate and adaptive immune system both innate and adaptive immune system components can fight fungal infection one such component is neutrophil which is a component of our blood and their phagocytotic activity really helps to prevent fungal infections or uh, it can fight against fungal infections now how does our body know that a fungus has entered or invaded our territory now these fungus cell walls they have specific signature of uh, sugar molecules such as glycans mannans etc and that can be detected by dedicated cell type of our immune system and these are known as pathogen associated molecular patterns so that could be detected by specific receptors that is how our body know that we are affected by a fungal infection immediately there would be responses such as complement fixation so this complement fixation can degrade the fungus now apart from these responses th1 which is a t helper cell subtype can also fight back fungal infections t helper 1 cell secretes a specific molecule known as interferon gamma which is proven to be pretty effective to activate macrophages now macrophages are scavenger cells which can scavenge and engulf all these pathogens such as funguses or bacteria whoever come in their way so this strong macrophage in activation via th1 cell is one of the defense response apart from that one particular subtype of t helper cell is known as th17 cell which are crucial for defense against fungal infection so il17 or interleukin 17 is a key molecule which gives us this particular protection and this is secreted by th17 cell now th17 cells are generated when naive t cells are activated in presence of interleukin 6 or tgf beta right but in case of covid patient the biggest problem is interleukin storm and that is why specific medication is provided to prevent the interleukin storm once we prevent the interleukin storm the th17 cells which are crucial for fungal infection or crucial for uh, defense against fungal infection they are just compromised and that is why we are more susceptible towards a fungal disease now let's try to understand that whether these fungal diseases are very new or they existed for quite a long time it turns out if you look for case histories in uh, hiv patients these kind of fungal infections were reported previously now at this situation what we can tell that hygiene in hospital settings need to be improvised and hospital premises should be sanitized regularly such there such that all the germs and other pathogens could be uh, could be eliminated when it is your personal hygiene you should wash your hands you should 
wear clean clothes as much as possible and also cleaning your household disinfecting surfaces is crucial. Now after watching this long video you might be thinking that funguses are like devils. But let me tell you out of millions of species of fungus only 400 are uh, harmful agents. Many fungus we eat right and they are pretty delicious so don't be averse to funguses but stay safe in this pandemic time. With that I'll finish my video. If you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe and you can support my channel on Patreon and thanks for listening.